So at this point, we have learned every single property of logs, and so that can be summarized right here. So officially, we have seven properties and then a change of base formula. And what we're going to do now is we are going to try and apply all of these properties at once to simplify any variation of a logarithmic expression. And so let's just get right into those examples. All right. In this slide here, what we want to do is we want to take these single logarithms and we want to rewrite them as individual logarithms. So we want to separate them out as far as possible. We did some examples of these in the last individual video, but as you can tell, now we're going to be applying all of our properties at once. I suggest that you pause the video to see how far you can get in these examples. Okay, so in the first one, log base A of x squared y to the fifth over z to the fourth, I see that I have a product on top. So that's going to use the product property where it becomes addition. And then I have a division on the bottom. So that's going to use the quotient property where I have subtraction. And so if I just separate out those things in this step, that gives me log base A of x squared plus log base A of y to the fifth minus log base a of z to the fourth. So wherever I had a multiplication, that changed into the addition, and wherever I had a division, that changed into my subtraction. So that utilized the product and the quotient rule property. Now we see that we have exponents on each of these, so we're going to utilize the power rule property, and we are going to bring those exponents down in front. And so this gives me 2 times log base A of X plus 5 times log base A of Y minus 4 times log base A of Z. And so we have expressed each of these in terms of sums and differences. And so that's all we needed to do for this example. That's our final answer. Of course, if we could simplify anything, we could. We cannot here because we see that we have multiple variables where we have bases of A, and then our arguments ranges from X, Y, and Z. So if you didn't know where to start before on your own, hopefully that gives you a great insight. And so now perhaps you can pause the video and work on example two on your own. So we're going to do the exact same thing in example two. Um, the, the difference between this one and the last one is that the last one had individual exponents. This one's going to have one major overall exponent. Of course, we don't see it as an exponent now, so let's go ahead and rewrite it that way. I have log of all of this, x plus y squared over 10, and then if I rewrite the cube root as an exponent, that can be written as the one-third power. Again, to review, the nth root of something to the nth power is x to the n divided by n. I don't have an overall power on the inside, so I can think of that as all to the first power, and that's why I can rewrite this as to the one-third power. Now, since I have one major overall power, I need to take that power and I need to bring it down first. And then I can worry about the inside of my log function. So this is one-third times log of x plus y squared divided by 10. Okay. Now I see I have another power here, so you might think, first of all, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down. But if I bring that down now, that's assuming that this also had that same power. It does not. So that actually violates my rules of order. So I need to treat each of these as individuals. So I'm going to utilize my quotient rule property now. So I have one-third of all of this. I need to make sure that my one-third goes throughout everything because it is times everything here. 
And this is log of x plus y squared minus log of 10. And the reason that it's minus is because it was a division. Okay, now what I can do is I can finally take this power here and bring it down in front. And then if you think about this over here, this is actually log base 10 of 10. And so anytime those match, they cancel out. And so this gives me one third times two log of x plus y minus one. And so I've separated out all of the logs that I can possibly separate out. And now basically the only thing I might want to do here is to take this one-third power and simplify it by distributing it back through. So this gives me two-thirds log of x plus y minus one-third. And I have separated out all of these logs as far as I possibly can in this expression. So I've got my final answer box down third, down there. Two-thirds log of x plus y minus one-third. So these were examples of taking single logs and expanding them out and simplifying them as far as we could. Let us switch that around. I'm going to take examples of where we have the logs expanded out, and we want to write them as a single logarithm. So we're basically doing the backwards of what we just did in the last example. Um, at this point, I think that you have enough information to go ahead and pause it and see if you can work this on your own. Okay, so in number one, I have a subtraction, which changes into a division with single logs. And I have another subtraction, which also changes into division in single logs. So that means since these are subtractions, then these are both in the denominator because of that subtraction. Since this one was a positive, then this one's going to be in the numerator. So this gives me log base two, and of course all of our bases should match, which they do, they're all base two. That's the only way we can combine it. And so that gives me 560 in the numerator divided by seven and five in the denominator. And so technically, this is 7 times 5 in the denominator. If you want to think about this as a different way, I can take these last two logs here, and I can factor out a negative of them. So this is minus log base 2 of 7 plus log base 2 of 5. So that might be another insight as to why they are both in the denominator because of the subtraction and why in the denominator they are in fact a multiplication because of the addition there. So if I wanna simplify this, it's just simple math. I need to do log base two. I can multiply seven times five or I can divide these. So the first thing that I wanna do is figure out what is 560 divided by five. So if I divide each of these by five, that gives me 112 in the numerator and then just one in the denominator. We're lucky enough that 7 actually goes into 112 evenly, so I can divide them by 7 now. So 7 divided by itself, it gives me 1, and 112 divided by 7 gives me 16. And so this gives me log base 2 of 16. Maybe you wanted to do it a different way. Maybe you wanted to take 560 divided by 35, and then just type that in your calculator. That will also give you 16 in itself. But now I can simplify this. If I treat this log as a question, 2 to what power gives me 16? Well, 2 to the fourth power gives me 16. So my answer here just simplifies to be 4. And so we can see by writing this as a single log, I can simplify it a whole bunch. I can simplify the inside, and then I can simplify by actually just eliminating the log part of this. And so my final answer here is 4. All right, hopefully that gives you an insight if you didn't know where to start. And so now maybe you can pause the video and work example two on your own. Okay, in example two, the first thing that I need to do is I need to take this guy out here and I need to move him into the power. So the only way I can combine them is if I get rid of all of the coefficients out front. 
So this gives me natural log of x to the one-half power, and then I'm just rewriting everything else that I see at this moment. Okay. Anytime I see an addition, that's going to go in the numerator, and anytime I see a subtraction, that's going to go in the denominator. So this is natural log of x to the one-half times x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. So now I have formally put it into one logarithmic expression. But, of course, I always want to simplify it if I can. Um, one thing that I'm going to do is rewrite this one-half power. I know I can rewrite it as a square root. And then, in hopes to cancel things, I'm actually going to factor this x squared minus 1. It factors by using a difference of squares. So this gives me natural log of square root of x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. So that's factoring my difference of squares in the blue and rewriting my power in the yellow. And then in the denominator, I still see x plus 1. The advantage to us factoring this is the x plus 1s cancel out. And so this simplifies to be the natural log of square root of x times x minus 1. And we have simplified it as far as possible. I can distribute that square root of x, but I don't think that's going to gain me any ground here. So I believe that we've done this as far as we possibly can. And so these are examples of taking multiple logs and combining them together and then, of course, simplifying them. In the next video, we're going to be working one more type of example of simplifying logarithmic expressions.